Hi again guys, today I'm going to show you a very simple to use tool if you want to create charts or any other type of diagram. It's called draw.io and the best parts of this tool are that it's free and very simple to use. Before we move on to creating our first diagram, I must mention that it is very important to save the document from the very beginning in a safe place that you will remember. This time we are going to create a new diagram and you can choose from a series of business diagrams, charts, engineering charts, flow charts, or even just a basic blank diagram. For this video we are going to create a map diagram just because I have more features to show you with it. So after choosing your diagram you can pick its name, click on create, and then it's very important to find the right folder where you would like to edit. And you will be taken to your diagram. And to make draw.io clear to you, I will start by briefly showing you each of its functionalities and what you can do with it. So basically, once you've created the diagram, you can share it. You can even collaborate on it by chatting. You can make a copy of it if you'd like to have the same diagram but a bit different. You can move it to a folder that maybe is easier for you to remember if you'd like to make further changes in the future. Because remember that once you've created the diagram, you can still go back and make some changes to it so it's not the final version. Then you can export it. And this is the most important part if you want to use the diagram for a presentation, a project, or anything like this. Because this is basically how you're going to save it in an actual photo format. You can also embed it, publish it, or print it, among others. Then from the view section, you can edit the way in which you actually see your workplace, such as... You can get an outline of your diagram, its layers if you'd rather work with them. You can also remove your search and anything else that you don't use but stands in your way, like maybe your scratch pad. What you would use your scratch pad is to pass shapes that you might or not use. So maybe you are uncertain whether you like to use this one. You can just grab it here and later you can work on it and bring it back. Then you have a quick access to shapes, arrows, anything else you'd like. You can remove the grid if it bothers you. You can add a shadow to what you're creating. And most importantly, you'll see these connection arrows and points. This is basically what you can use to connect one element to another. So let's take this from the scratch pad and I'll just show you how you can connect an element to the others on your diagram. So basically you've got these connect arrows. You can use it to collect your element to any other part of this diagram via an arrow. And if you remove the connection arrows, you won't see them anymore. However, you can still do this action by pulling on these connection points. And it's basically the same thing. But again, if you want to remove the connection points as well, you can do this and now you will no longer have them because sometimes people are bothered by it if they just want to create simple diagrams. If you don't remove them, when it comes to making the size of your element bigger, it's a bit more difficult because you have to click twice on the element and the ears might not know this. Another interesting thing is that if you do not like the layout of your workspace, you can actually change it by going to Extras and picking a different theme. I'll just show you one example. Once you click on it, you have to refresh the page and you will be taken to a totally different setting. And if you want to go back to the previous one, you just click on Diagram, Preferences, Theme, and go back to the Kennedy layout. And again, click on Refresh. Some other more advanced extra things you can do with this include creating a shape using code, editing the diagram again using code, and even adding a plugin. And just to mention, in case you notice that your diagram is not being saved, you can go to Extras and make sure that the Auto Save button is selected. 
Now moving on to actually creating the diagram, I will start by removing some of the elements that we already have, which you can do manually or by selecting all of the elements that you want to delete and clicking on delete. Notice how on the left side of the screen you have all of the different characteristics for that element you're selecting, including the style, its text, and its arrangement. If you want to see which one works best for you, just test all of these ones, and basically that is how you are going to become an expert in this tool. Now on the left side, you will have a few elements that you can add to your diagrams and they are very easy to put on your actual work by just clicking on them and dropping it. Then you have the more shapes option, which are more specific for certain categories of diagrams and content that you want to create. Then you have the arrange option. Where if you go to insert, you can find a series of elements that you might want to add to your diagram, such as a link, an image, a type of flow or diagram tree, and so on. Let me just show you how some of them work. The horizontal flow. Basically, you can create your diagram separately from the one you have and then just insert it and move it where you want to place it. You can also create a radial tree, which is basically perfect for mind maps or any other type of diagrams that you want to use to show all of your ideas. And you can just connect all of them to each other. You also have the layout option. You can use this to structure your entire diagram that you have already created in a certain way. For example, if we were to choose the horizontal flow, our entire diagram would be changed according to our option without modifying the relationship between elements. And you can either pick a different type of layout or take a look at some of the other options that you have once you have chosen the elements. You can either flip them, rotate them, or even group them if you want to work with them as an individual element. Finally, some of the other things that you need to explore yourself are the other small elements like creating a different page, which is basically if you want to create a separate diagram under the same project or removing these sidebars. This way you will have a clear workspace or picking different types of views such as a full screen. You can always go on and change the language of this tool. And if you can't find a feature that you want, you can always go to the help page and try to look for something that you'd like to make using this tool. Also, as I've mentioned before, don't forget that after you have finished your diagram, you must save it in a place where you will remember that you have put it. This way, you will always be able to come back to the diagram and make any changes that you like. Every single element of your diagram is easily customizable from the shapes to the arrows, text, and so on. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that it was clear enough. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. Let me know if you're interested in other tutorials and see you in the next video. Have a great day.